Let's check in with Dan Eberhardt. He's the chairman and owner of Twin Express Trucking in Minneapolis. He's also the author of the book, The Switch, America's Global Energy Renaissance. And he probably has one of the most popular jobs right now. He's probably one of the most popular people I think I've ever seen. And I say this because, Dan, first off, thank you for joining us because I actually saw at a grocery store just uh, last week and people were cheering as a truck came in and was, mm -hmm. they were bringing they were bringing certain items and people who were so excited to see this. Uh, Dan, th again, thanks for joining me. What? So this is a bad situation. This is really bad. 80,000 drivers are going to have to be recruited. That's an, a number. That's an unheard of number. Yeah, no, look, I think the situation is, is really bad. Before COVID and before all this, there was a shortage of truck drivers. Freight demand has climbed. The economy is doing well. And we just, you know, these jobs, we just can't attract enough people to these jobs to, f to fill all the trucks, you know, as a company at Twin Express and as an industry. So we've got, you know, a, a giant problem, a bottleneck in our supply chain. And it's it's really weighing on the economy. It's weighing on economic growth. And we really need to do something to change the game here. Yeah, and I and 80,000 and I read um, from another industry insider something like over the next several years, like it's, I mean, people are looking to hire like a million uh, drivers for, I mean, to, to, to get freight around. And also, mm -hmm. too, there's the consideration of hours driven because, you know, everybody has to operate safely as well. You want to make sure you don't have people who are too exhausted out there on the roads, too. So what is this kind of pressure and this demand doing to drivers that are already on the road now? Well, it's pushing up wages and it's making the competition for experienced drivers intense. But, you know, I would say this is a little bit of a forest and a trees problem in terms of these individual regulations about safety, about uh, driver safety, and about you know mandatory restarts and, and these kind of things, how many hours someone can work, all make sense like in specificity, but when you add them all up, it's basically a drag on recruiting drivers. And look, the economy's hot. People can go into construction, people can go into manufacturing, they can work, you know, get overtime, they can be home on the weekend, and it makes driving a truck a little bit less exciting, a little bit less attractive than some of these other industries. And the net result is enough people aren't wanting to get into the industry to replace the people that are retiring and to add for the increased economic uh, activity we have right now. And so, look, at Twin Express Freight Demand, which we haul, our niche is uh, refrigerated food. That's our core concentration and what we focus on. Our freight demand is is through the roof. It's really about and we can buy more equipment, although it's hard to get equipment, but we can we can access more equipment and continue to grow our fleet as we have through the years. But what we can't do, what we struggle with is recruiting additional drivers and bringing onboarding new drivers is very difficult. Ooh, yeah, I, I would imagine. Uh, what, what's one of like the what's one of the hurdles that that you come across when you're trying to recruit, you know, uh, like qualified people to drive? Like I always say that I think I could totally drive one of these rigs. My husband completely disagrees with me because I'm just like it's <laughs> it's a huge vehicle. I'm a tiny woman and I love the idea of driving a big giant truck. It's amazing. But what are you? I mean, what what's the hurdle that y'all are facing? Well, it's something you have to take serious. But one of the problems I think is that you know to get a commercial driver's license, you've got to be 21. And so I think a lot of people are to drive across state lines. So a lot of people, I think, are making career decisions 18, 19, 20 before that. Then we've got oh, insurance yeah. that basically incentivizes us to hire people with two years experience. So then they're 23 when they start and people have just made career decisions by then. So, like, you know, that's one thing, for instance. Another thing is people want to have their days off when they're when they're at home so they can go to their daughter's Girl Scouts, their uh, boys basketball game or, or whatever. And if your mandatory time off to rest is when you're, you know, let's say you're coming from Minneapolis, you're dropping a load in Boston. Nobody wants to spend two days off in Boston uh, due to a mandatory regulation. They want to spend their days off in Minneapolis because that's where they're from, you know, typical situation. Mm. And the laws are just designed against that. Again, everything's initially based on safety, but I think that we put so much weight on this tree that it's dragging down the whole tree and making it really hard to recruit drivers. And I think this is really a, a sticky point with the economy right now. And it's really uh, limiting the economic growth and it may stall out the recovery. And the supply chain is just stretched at all limits. I think that this Christmas, there's going to be a lot less stuff um, on store shelves than what we want or in Amazon warehouses than we need. Or I think that a lot of it's going to end up being delivered via air freight. And that's going to push the cost up for consumers ultimately, all because um, there's not enough flex in the system for this for this kind of economic growth and we we really need more labor and we need a a better grease supply chain to be able to handle this uh, economic growth right now